Welcome back to Engineering Made Easy, our series on thermodynamics. Today we're going to be going over our first example problem set, covering problems dealing with units, unit conversions, and specific volume. So for our first problem, we have a tank of compressed nitrogen at 5,500 PSI. And you want to convert that pressure to kilopascals and megapascals. So the first step in this problem is to look up what our unit conversion is between PSI and KPA. We can find that in our textbook, in our thermodynamic tables, or we can look that up on the internet. So I'm looking this up in my tables here, and I'm finding that one PSI is equivalent to 6.895 KPA. So now we just need to do a simple unit conversion. And I like to do this by making kind of a chart where I can track my unit cancellations. So I'm starting at 5,500 PSI. And that A just stands for atmospheric rather than gauge pressure. Make a little table here. And then I plug in my conversion. So I'm putting one PSI in the denominator so that the units will cancel. And then I'm putting 6.895. 895 kPa in the numerator so that I can find what my kPa is. So then if I multiply 5500 times 6.895 kPa, um, I find my pressure in kilopascals, and that number is going to be 37,923 kPa. Great. So now if we want to convert to megapascals, we just do the same thing, except we're starting now from 37,923 kPa. We make our chart here, and we know our unit conversion between kilopascals and megapascals. We have 1,000 kilopascals and 1 MPa. So then our answer in megapascals is going to be 37.923 megapascals. Great, so that's just a simple unit conversion, something you'll probably have to do along the way in a lot of future problems. So for the second problem, it's going to ask us, okay, what is the pressure um, in PSI of a water line that's given as 15 bar? So now we need to convert from bar into PSI. We're going to do this as a two-step process just to show you what the unit conversion process is like if you have to do two Unit conversions. So we know that one bar equals 100 kPa. And from before, we know that one psi equals 6.895 kPa. Okay, so I'm starting from 15 bar and I want to get to psi. I'm going to make my chart here. We're going to do two unit conversions. Give us our final answer. So first we're going to convert to kPa. So we put one bar down here in the denominator and 100 kPa in the numerator. Bars cancel. And then we're going to come over here and do our conversion from kPa to PSI. So we'll put 6.895 kPa here and one PSI here. Now something to note is I'm multiplying by a ratio, right? One over 6.895. But this, because one PSI is equal to 6.895 kPa, I'm essentially multiplying by one here. So this is valid anytime, as long as your unit conversion is correct. So then if I was to multiply and divide this out, right, I would do 15 times 100 divided by 6.895. And my final answer would be 217.55 PSI is my pressure. So just a two-step process, but again, pretty straightforward unit conversion. Okay, so a final example problem today. We're given the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed at ambient conditions. It's about 25 degrees C, atmospheric pressure. And it's asking, okay, what is the specific volume? So the only thing we need to remember here is that specific volume is 
equal to 1 over the density. Density is given, so we're going to do 1 over 1,000 milligrams per liter cube. So then our specific volume here is going to be 0 0.001 meters cubed per kilogram. Pretty straightforward, but again, emphasizes the fact that we can go from density to specific volume via a straightforward conversion at any time. So hopefully these examples were helpful. Um, if you have any questions on the work, please feel free to leave me a comment and stay tuned for the next session. Thanks.